book as well. So once again, my name is Jackie Wright, and I really appreciate you uh, being here for 30 days uh, to success, 30 days, rather 30 minutes to success, uh, Inspirational Tuesday Talk. My name is Jackie Wright. And so what we're going to do is go over scriptures as we've done before. And, and I always uh, let everybody know that, hey, I am not a biblical scholar. So just want you to know that. But what I, I do hope is that I will inspire you to, um, you know, find out what God is saying to you through the scriptures that I share or who knows, maybe you can advance beyond me, which I would hope you would, and be a um, a scholar yourself. But in the meantime, it is our daily bread. It is something that helps us out uh, as we're encountering um, the various things that we can encounter in the earth. Uh, I can say that uh, the scriptures that I have are in the description box uh, in the Facebook um, form there, right up under this image you see of me, there are the scriptures and you can go back over them yourselves. Uh, I, I apologize for the formatting change. The formatting is not as it was uh, as I created it, but sometimes, you know, there's things get lost in translation. And so um, still the scriptures are there and you can take a look and then also I will be posting a link to the uh, Facebook, uh, not the Facebook, but the uh, YouTube as well. So you'll have that as a resource that you can go through. And we're just going to go ahead and get right started into our subject today. And of course, around this time of year, we have all those beautiful songs, Christmas songs, and, you know, just lovely light melody and uh you know, it kind of uh, is not indicative of really what I think the uh, season represents. And for me, uh, the season represents uh, Jesus is the reason for the season, everybody says, but usually they don't add on to it that why Jesus came and Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And so I just want to uh, share with you some scriptures that uh, kind of, uh, you know, highlights that for me, that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And in doing so, that means uh, we have an opportunity for victory as we walk in the ways of Jesus as followers of Christ, those of us who are, and that we can um, basically implement the victory that has already been won for us. And many times we go around uh, in life and we um, basically um, go around with this kind of defeatist attitude when we already know what the end is going to be for that, that satanic rule that will be ended. And uh, Revelation tells us all about it. And as I share my screen with the uh, Zoom audience, um, I just remind you once again, today we're talking about Jesus, the reason for the season, and that is to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy the devil. And we uh, meet at this time, uh, sometimes in the lobby, which I am in the lobby today, and sometimes just over the internet. And so the scriptures um, that we're going to go over today, uh, key scripture is 1 John 3 and 8. And I have it for you both in the message translation and the new international version. The message translation says, so my dear children, don't let anyone divert you from the truth. It's the person who acts right, who is right, just as we see it lived out in our righteous Messiah. Those who make a practice of sin are straight from the devil, the pioneer of the practice of sin. The son of God entered the scene to abolish the devil's ways. There it is right there plainly. The son of God enters, entered the scene to abolish the devil's ways. And, you know, as I look at the way uh, the message Bible has described this, and it says that 
uh, the devil, the pioneer of the practice of sin. You know, wow. It makes me think about what Jesus said about Satan, that uh, lying is his native language. So that's the other thing uh, for us to take note of. A lot of things are being said, a lot of things are being done, but um, many of them are lies, especially those things that are emanating uh, from the kingdom of darkness that's emanating from uh, Satan's work. And so um, be mindful of that. You don't have to swallow that lie. You don't have to accept that lie. And as a matter of fact, we're told that we should resist the devil and he will free, flee from us. So instead of uh, accepting the hate, let us love. Let's be uh, the antithesis of whatever uh, Satan happens to be um, throwing our way. And that same verse, 1 John, 1 John 3 and 8, where it says in the New International Version, the one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. So there we are. Here we are. The, the manger is a, a symbol many times uh, of Christmas and everything, the nativity. And it's such a serene, wonderful uh, scene. But in reality, to me, it's symbolic of war. We should be fighting against all of the evil uh, that is out in the world. And we begin with ourselves, um, our own self-control, our own fighting back whatever the enemy has thrown our way. Now, our bonus scripture, which is uh, given weekly, is um, Psalm twenty-two, twenty-four: 24. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. And I share that every week because sometimes we feel so inadequate with uh, the do's and don'ts that we think um, that we have to achieve, achieve in, only, in order to have God's love, which is like we are not human doings doing this, doing that, but we're human beings. And as human beings, uh, we have the love of God already. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Like, wow, that's a gift that's been extended. And it's just a matter of you accepting that gift or not. And so I talk about the fact that no matter uh, how you might, conditions you might find yourself in, there's nothing under the sun that God will, would keep from hearing from you. So you can cry out to him and he does not abhor the affliction of the afflicted. Whatever is afflicting you, he doesn't abhor it. And uh, he will open his arms. He will receive you. As a matter of fact, when I look at the cross, it looks at the extended arms. It's all about Jesus saying right there on the cross, hey, I have my arms open for you. So God has his arms open for you. And remember that. Our PowerPoints for today, Jesus is the creator. You can find that in John 1 and 3, Colossians 1, 16, and Hebrews 1 and 2, where it specifically says that it is Jesus Christ who created the world as we uh, know it. So as Mankind is finding out about the various solar systems and sending back pictures from space. It, it was Jesus who created all of that. And this is just the beginning. And as I consider the planets and the things that are out there, it just um, reinforces that um, promise of God that uh, he's going to eternally be revealing himself to us and showing us good and marvelous things. So we got a lot to look forward to, even in the midst of um, some of the very sad news that we find around us. The good news is God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? And so Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil is um, the first PowerPoint that I hope you get out of this uh, discussion today. The followers of Christ are at war with the devil. So we got a <clears throat> there's a war going on. And we have to be mindful of that. Um, you know, although it's not the natural bombs and things like that we hear, but there 
there's a lot of activity going on around us uh, as um, angels are engaged and as they're dealing with uh, the demonic that's happening. And as you have been called to deal with the um, demonic, because we um, wrestle not against flesh and blood, wrestle. Hey, that sounds like a fight going on to me. So if we wrestle not against uh, flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, if that's the reality that we're dealing with in uh, Ephesians 6, we should think about that. And so to me, um, Jesus being the reason for the season is commemoration of that time when Jesus stepped into our world uh, to redeem us. And so that is powerful. Uh, just to keep that in mind. And the last point is we prevail against Satan with the weapons uh, from God for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, earthly, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every thought that would exalt itself against the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's those thoughts against Jesus that says, you know, Jesus wants us to love our neighbors and those thoughts against him would cause us to be in uh, physical war as we look at what's going on in uh, many parts of the world, in Africa, in Europe, where there are the fights going on. And then, of course, you know, we look at the fights going on, you know, in terms of our economy, it's in terms of uh, corporations, in terms of uh, individuals having to stand against corporations and the various things, the battles that are happening on various fronts. Have some resources for you though, that can encourage you. Uh, it was interesting as I was uh, looking for things to, uh, to write about and I didn't put this on the piece that was written by Dr. Yous Youssef, um, Michael Youssef, but I'm gonna put it here now and his writing was in 2021. So in 1883, Charles Haddon Spurgeon wrote, the works of the devil destroyed. So we have that from 1883. And in 1984, I have John Piper who wrote, the son of God appeared to destroy the works of the devil. So as that thought came to me about, oh yeah, uh, what's the reason for the season? Jesus came and Jesus came to uh, destroy the works of the devil. Uh, there are more learned people than myself that that idea has uh, come to and they've written about it as a matter of fact. And uh, Dr. Michael jo Yosef uh, basically says, I think it's pronounced Yosef, is, um, writes, uh, Jesus destroys the devil's work. So here, there it is. There are some resources for you. And I'm sure if you Google, you'll find some others as well. And um, there are 10 Bible verses on spiritual warfare that was collated by uh, the New Spring Church that I share with you. Spiritual warfare, some scriptures to keep in mind. It's like, if nothing else, it's an awakening uh, for you that, hey, yeah, there's there's fighting going on. And and how do I, I deal with that? Um, and then also openbible.info has 100 Bible verses about uh, the devil being defeated. So that's uh, a great source. And then also um, there are 30 Bible verses the Bible, the devil doesn't want you to know. So uh, number one, the fact that he is a defeated foe and Revelation tells us that, you know, that we overcame him by the word of the lamb, lamb by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And I like that scripture because it shows um, that I just, from Revelations, we overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That looks at that combination that happens uh, between God's work and our, our work. Jesus died on the cross for us to have uh, eternal life. God did his part and then we do our part by the word of our testimony. And our testimony should be in alignment uh, with our actions. Our actions should be in alignment with our testimony. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So we've been redeemed. That was one of the uh, wonderful things about the reason for the season, Jesus coming to destroy the works of the devil so that we could be redeemed. So we would not have the end that he's going to have as it is described in um, Revelation 
you know, that hell and, and Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire. So woo, we don't want to be there no matter <laughs> what that looks like, degrees of, of uh, destruction that is. We don't want to be anywhere near that. And so we have an opportunity and our opportunity is to listen to the word of God. And after hearing the word of God, heeding and having the actions that need to be in alignment with that as well. And in 1 John 3 and 8, it says, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. So there you have it. You know, we have an enemy. He's running about. He's running amok uh, right about now, as the uh, revelation says that the, uh, the closer it comes to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, that um, there would be more violence and there would be more um, destruction. Uh, on the earth as a result of Satan. But, you know, let's be encouraged because the word of God causes us to prevail. And so I just want you to be encouraged um, to know that it's not the end, although we may be experiencing uh, the various things that we're experiencing, we can be above it all. And once you know you have an enemy, once you know that you are in a fight, um, you have um, you have an opportunity to overcome, but you know if you have no idea, we, we have no idea that uh, these things are happening. There is uh, that's a whole nother another uh, issue, you know that we don't even have a clue. That, hey, yeah, we're in the midst of a battle right now. So I'm just one person out there, and I'm sure there are others that are telling you the reason for this season was to bring on war. And to bring on war so that your soul could be saved for eternity. It was not intended for you ever to die. You were to live forever and you will exist forever. And the question is, are you going to make the choice to be uh, with the things of God, accepting the salvation of Yeshua, the Messiah, or are you going to uh, let the um, conventions of the world convince you that, oh, there's nothing to it. And so therefore you miss out on one of the greatest things that you can have. And that's eternal life with God, knowing God, knowing and being with him. And um, to choose otherwise is to exist, but to exist in eternity where Jesus said the worm dieth not. So there's going to be a, a continuous devolution eating away at the excellence of the marvelous human being that you are. So I just encourage you to um, look for yourself, consider for yourself, cry out to God for yourself as in Psalm uh, 22 and 24, because he will hear you and make your decisions um, based on some information and not just feelings or what maybe your grandma didn't believe in this or your grandpa didn't believe in that or your uncle or somebody you heard along the way um, that you weren't in agreement with and you miss out on the most valuable thing that we can have in this life. It, you know, as I often think, the only way we get out alive <laughs> is through the Lord Jesus Christ. The only way we get out of this life alive is through the Lord Jesus Christ. So just uh, remember that. And if you don't believe it, just do your own due diligence and uh, just try to prove me wrong. In 1 John 3 and 8, we just talked about the fact, bam, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And in Colossians 2.15, bam, bam, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put to open shame by triumphing, by triumphing over them in him. So, hey, on that cross, you know, although it seems like a symbol of defeat, it was really a symbol of 
of uh, winning. It was a symbol of victory. And as I look at that cross, another thing I see, I see a sword. It's almost like um, God took a sword and went, bam, you know, where you have um, that sword. It looks like a sword to me uh, when you look at the cross. Uh, not only Jesus open arms, but also a sword where um, the battle, the battle, showing the battle. And to me, um, the um, the manger is kind of like a symbol of the atomic bomb. You know, all of that. What, how explosive that is through the ages, past, present, and future of what the birth of Jesus Christ um, meant to mankind, like an atomic bomb. You know, as a matter of fact, I was like, okay, okay, I need an image for this. Um, I wonder if there's anything out there that has an image of the manger as an atom atomic bomb. I know that was a far stretch, but I went looking anyway. And it was interesting uh, when I looked at it, uh, I found one, a story about um, some Catholic um, brothers, uh, priests, that were in um, Nagasaki at the time of the, uh, no, they were actually in Hiroshima at the time of the uh, the bombing. And they were not too far from the epicenter of what everything, where everything happened, but they happened to be in prayer. And they were saved. The building that they were in was not really uh, as damaged as, you know, you've seen some of those pictures. And they didn't have, they lived a long life. They didn't have any effects of radiation. So I found that. And then the other thing I found was quite disturbing. You know, I found this story about this veteran, a Canadian veteran that had ha asked their Canadian um, agency, veterans agency to help. Uh, she needed to, uh, needed a, something, a wheelchair lift. And she wrote to ask for them. And the response came back that, hey, would you like to have assisted suicide? Instead of giving her something that was helpful uh, to her, she asked for a, um, a wheelchair lift assist. And what did she get back in response? Uh, information about uh, getting assistant aid in dying, assistance in suicide. And so I looked at that and I said, oh my goodness, this is so indicative of the fact that we are at war. Here this woman is looking for something to improve her life. And instead the response is say, hey, we can help you kill yourself. Come on now. Now, you know, it's happening all around us. All of these things where the world has just, it's just out of order, big time. And as people do not adhere to, listen to the basics, you know, those Judeo-Christian um, values that were taught so many um, so many years in, um, you know, in, in English speaking uh, countries, especially uh, here in the US, Canada, Australia, Britain, all y'all, you know, come on now. We stepped away from that. And so thou shalt not kill. Mm. It, it, it doesn't, people aren't hearing, people aren't listening. And it was just so heartbreaking to me as I came across it this morning. And I think the story was written on December 2nd. Okay, just as we're entering into the holidays, somebody is offering somebody death when they were asking for help with their life. So that just goes to show you um, we're in the midst of guerrilla warfare and it starts with people's hearts and minds. Can you imagine? I, I almost don't have words to express. And if I were to be as transparent as I could be, I would start hollering and screaming right now. The audacity of that spirit of Satan operating to, through that um, agency worker to say, hey, 
we can help you kill yourself. Saying that to a woman who fought for her country, saying that to somebody who's disabled, they're already fighting different things. And you're going to say that to them. And with the um, despair that sometimes soldiers feel because have, of having been in war and everything, and too many of them leave this earth too soon by taking their own lives. And here it is, a governmental agency person is saying, oh, you're the quality of your life isn't good enough, so we're going to help you kill yourself. These are some very dark and demonic times, and we need to have the word of God in our minds and our hearts to help fight against that and help fight for people who can't fight for themselves yet. And uh, there's just so many uh, grievous things. I, in the news recently in Texas of the seven-year-old girl, Athena Strand and her family, where there was a uh, delivery driver that came to her house and he abducted her. And within a couple of hours, she was dead and they didn't find her for two days. This is wrong. And it really makes me understand the importance of this simple campaign that uh, Grady Harris, a music producer has uh, launched and that is to pray for the children. We need to pray for our children. We need to pray. There's something very wrong when um, a young child is abducted from their home like that. And of course, we've seen that in the past in the poly class case and so many others that don't even get reported. So we need to pray for our children. And in praying for them, we also need to take physical action to protect them as much as possible because as I know my great grandmother used to say, uh, the devil ain't playing. So the evil that has been unleashed, um, you know, there's no playing here. And I just ask the Lord, as you're listening to this, whoever may listen to this, that God's protection will be upon you and your family as I am praying for protection upon me and my family, according to Psalm 91 and all the various um words that are in the Bible that protect us because we would be ultimately destroyed if Satan has his way. And we're usually just kept in his circle, um, those people who are under his influence. And it says that um, Satan blinds the minds of people and they're under his influence long enough for them to be used as slaves in various um, positions from the lowest to the highest. So got a lot of prayer to do. We got a lot of action to do uh, followers of Christ as we occupy until the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Because the reality is that Satan and his um, demonic angels and everything, they've already been defeated. They've it says in Colossians 2.15, they've been put to, to open shame. You know, the reason for the season, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And we need to be party to that. We need to be in alignment to that. And it doesn't mean going out and acting in violent ways and vengeance and retaliation. Um, as I think about uh, Athena's grandfather that wrote on Facebook, how he didn't feel like he wanted to, but because God spoke to him, he had to forgive that um, delivery driver that came and took their precious child and such an angelic, beautiful, beautiful face of that child. Just, just a beautiful, I mean, just her pictures emanate 
uh, such beauty and just such grace. And it's just horrific to think that she was taken in such a violent way. Yet the father, grandfather fought back and said, he forgives that person. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. And it takes the strength of God to be able to forgive and to not be in alignment with the outrageous slings and arrows of outrageous fortune that uh, Satan sends our way. And it takes God's strength. And that is just another example of the weapons of our warfare not being carnal. That gracious grandfather, the grandfather that forgave this driver who confessed to taking his young child. And we're going to go through some other scriptures and everything because, you know, we, as in Ephesians 6, 11, it just shows right there. Um, just jump down to that. It says, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. So we have to put on the whole armor of God. And one of those arm armor pieces is um, the shield of faith. And that we have to have faith. And one of them is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we have to have the word of God just to help us, um, you know, fight through the various things that we have to fight through. And, you know, I am um, reminded, reminding you of that. And ultimately, as you go over the scriptures and you can look at them yourselves, and I think uh, James 4, 7 and 8 is one I'll go to right now where it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So we get into the word of God, and what to what purpose? Um, as I said, Jesus is the reason for the season. And the manger, symbolic of Jesus lying there, Seems so weak, little baby in a manger. But the creator of the universe was in that vulnerable moment demonstrating his power because his coming is like an atomic bomb that has allowed for us in a positive way to bring forth life instead of death. And I just encourage you to find out for yourself. And one place you can begin is in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. There's so much to that one verse and there's so, um, so many um, dimensions of what I'm talking about. But when you think about Jesus being the reason for the season, don't think of it as those little light songs that you hear about silver bells and that sort of thing. And the Christmas song, chestnuts roasting on an open fire, because there's war going on around us. And Jesus, being the reason for the season, came to destroy the works of the devil. And I just share with you um, those words and... Uh, Last week, we talked about the word of the day was Proverbs 18, and also Psalm um, 29, uh, Proverbs 29, and Psalm 29, that was on November 29th, 2022. And just one nugget that comes out of uh, Proverbs 29, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So on that note, I share with you 30 days, um, 30 days, rather 30 minutes to success, inspirational uh, Tuesday talk. And yes, 30 minutes a day will make a difference. And you can make it 30 days too. If you're on a daily basis, uh, just get in that word and uh, see what God is saying to you. And I'm just, I'm just a sign, just a signal. Say, hey, there's something going on. 
There's something going on in the universe and I want you to be strengthened. I want you to help occupy until the Lord Jesus Christ comes. I want you to defeat um, the enemy. I think of David and Goliath where David uh, annihilated something that was so much larger than himself. And what's so beautiful about it, he only not only knocked out Goliath, but he, with those that stone, but he took Goliath, Goliath's uh, sword and cut off his head. And so I just pray that as you're enjoying the wonderful beauty of uh, Christmas time and everything, you also realize that we are in a war and that the purpose of Jesus is coming. The reason for this, the season was to destroy the works of the devil. I'm encouraged by 1 Corinthians 15 that says that Jesus will destroy our last enemy, death. And so, hey, enemy, there's enemy, enemies that are talked about in the Bible. So find out what are some of the enemies um, facing you, facing your family that you need to be girded up for uh, this Christmas time to enjoy. Have a wonderful wonderful, holly jolly Christmas, but also have, be like Nehemiah, build and have that sword in your hand, not to tolerate uh, what the enemy would uh, bring your way because you can be more than an overcomer, more than an overcomer, as it says in Romans, against what Satan's got going on. So just want to encourage you, have a wonderful holiday season. Um, as we kick it off now and everything, enjoy, but be ready to battle too. God bless you and God keep you. And thank you for joining me for 30 Minutes to Success, Inspirational Tuesday Talk. My name is Jackie Wright, not a theologian, uh, not a biblical scholar, but just somebody walking along this life that's saying, hey, there's a better way for me and you. And that's going through the word of God that will show us how to fight if we have to. And isn't it interesting that one of the major, major weapons that we have is love, how to treat one another. So I encourage you, have a wonderful, loving holiday season and destroy the works of the devil along with the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity just to be, just to be, and to declare what your word says, that we can overcome the works of the devil, resist the devil, humble ourselves before you, resist the devil, and we too shall overcome. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Blessings to you.